Nini, everyone. Um, it's I know it's been a while, but uh, I guess it is what it is because this job that I've uh, been working at for hmm almost a month now, really. Um, it's been a little stressful, so you know I've been taking the weekends to kind of de-stress and just relax for a while. But uh, you know I wanted to get back to this because I really enjoy making videos. And, I don't know, I guess it's just my hope to become a big name pagan someday, but, uh, you know, I don't know if that will ever happen. <laughs> but, uh, one can always hope. But, uh, I, I haven't done too many things in terms of, uh, planning videos or anything like that. Um, uh, I've been working a little bit on, like, uh, you know, plants that the ancient Egyptians held sacred, but uh, I don't know, I guess I've uh, been kind of held up a little bit. Um, one thing I wanted to do was, uh, you know, do some more research on that, on that subject, and I wanted to buy this one particular book called An Egyptian Herbal, but uh, lately I haven't had the money for it, um, even though I've had this job for almost a month now. Um, snafus and getting paid and everything you know how things are when um, you know you first get a job you know you're maybe getting paper checks or something and they come late in the mail you know that sort of thing anyhow um, I have the book ordered in Egyptian herbal ordered so I'm just waiting it for, to come um, but in the meantime I've been doing research on Egyptian lotuses so uh, that's probably the first video that I want to do in sort of, I guess, maybe almost a series on uh, Egyptian plants. Because, um, you know, if you were to know me <laughs> personally, you know that I am a big plant nerd. Um, and, you know, uh, anyone can guess on uh, my YouTube channel, I'm also a big Egyptophile and an Egyptian pagan. So I guess uh, the, the two go hand in hand. So that's in the works but um, I, I uh, have been thinking of different topics to talk about in the interim <laughs> some of them are controversial some of them are not um, this one might be um, so uh, I just wanted to talk about uh, being a pagan and also being a skeptic and this is a very interesting topic for my, me myself because when I first started um, researching paganism, it was from a point of agnosticism. Um, when I was 14, I completely gave up my faith in Christianity because of the idea that, um, you know, non-Christians go to hell. And I could not, um, you know, uh, square my sense of compassion and then love for my fellow human beings with the belief that they would go to hell. Or that any deity would would do something like that, um, but uh, you know, obviously later on, I started having more questions about uh, you know, well, what's my purpose in life? Is there a god? Do I have a soul? That sort of thing. And at the same time, I was in college, and eventually, I well, for the most part, always had always intended to major in a uh, science field, a science major, and eventually I ended up in biology. At first it was chemistry, but uh, I decided that I wanted to do something more in the life sciences. But I digress. But always, always, ever since I was a little child, I've always believed in science. Um, I remember when I was very young, Oh, maybe around seven years old in the first grade, I would beg my mother to let me stay up and watch Bill Nye the Science Guy. So, <laughs> and especially if you've heard about, um, oh gosh, that one debate that he had with Ken Ham, you know, that creationist guy. Um, everybody's been talking about it. Um, <laughs> and I have yet to see it. And I really want to, but it's like three hours long. But anyway, if, if you knew me and you know, my penchant for science ever since I was little, you know, I've always been trying to balance 
um, my sense of belief in a deity with my skepticism. And when I mean my skepticism, I'm, I mean my knowledge that, you know, certain mythologies just don't jive with what we know through science. And it's very interesting because, you know, it's like I do believe in a deity. I'm a polytheist. And at the same time, I believe in science. And so, you know, it's like <laughs> I feel torn a lot of the time between being a pagan or a believer in a deity, even just a theist, and being a skeptic. But <laughs> I try to juggle the two. So, you know, I believe I'm a, I'm a theist. I am a polytheist. I believe in multiple gods. Um, I also believe in magic, um, which is very funny when you kind of think about it because I am also, you know, uh, a skeptic. I believe in science. Um, and this generally has to do with the fact that I have personal experiences that attest to the existence of gods and magic. Um, and also, too, the idea that uh, as a scientist, I have done experiments with magic and they have worked. You know, obviously, I can't, you know, attest to the efficacy of magic 100% of the time. Um, there are very many philosophical problems with magic, especially on the skeptical point of view, because magic is predicated on the belief that there are, you know, um, forces that aren't detectable by science as of yet in this world, and that um, they may not be measurable at all by science. Um, sort of like prayer. Um, you know, so many atheists and uh, skeptics believe that uh, prayer can't possibly be real because, you know, it doesn't get answered. You know, they've done experiments and they say, oh, well, you know, uh, since it, uh, since prayer, you know, we've had uh, statistics saying prayer doesn't work, um, then obviously it doesn't. But the thing about that is, is like, you know, you're predicating that on the, the idea that prayer always works 100% of the time. Um, what kind of prayer you're doing? Or is it a healing? Or is it just asking for money or something? Um, which deity? Will that deity respond? I don't think that's verifiable by science. At all. Um... But uh, at the same time, too, um, I reject the idea of metaphysical naturalism in the sense that um, there's uh, nothing, uh, anything that we cannot verify through science does not exist. So, uh, because I, I realized how limited we are as human beings. But at the same time, it's it's very frustrating because being a skeptic, I also don't really believe in like things like cryptozoology or faith healing or, you know, some of the things that you hear so much about within like, I guess, pagan or new age circles. Um, you know, when you talk about uh, ghosts or magic or different things like that to me, you have to provide evidence to me. Uh, it's like, you know, say you were to uh, say, oh, this house is haunted. It's like, well, where's your evidence that this house is haunted? Has anybody seen anything over there? And even then, you know, have you had any, and this, and, and this is where it gets really hard because for, you know, I, I used to watch a lot of, um, what is that one show? Ghost Hunters? Um, when I was younger. But, uh, you know, it's really difficult because, you know, you don't really know what will constitute evidence in, in these sorts of circumstances because it's like, does the lowering of temperature really indicate that there's a ghost there? Um, orbs or, you know, 
uh, the, the electromagnetism that they use, you know, those uh, meters that they use, do those really indicate any kind of presences like that? We don't really know for certain. And, you know, it's like I remember being in a lot of science classes where they were talking about this sort of subject and they're saying, well, this is pseudoscience. And, you know, at first I was like, oh, wow, wow, well, whoa, because, you know, I used to be such fans of this, these kinds of shows like uh, Ghost Hunters and stuff. But, you know, really, once you think about it, do we really know that, um, you know, these sorts of uh, measurements indicate the presence of uh, like a dead person or, or something of the sort? No, we don't. Um, I think the problem with that is, is because we can't really, you know, do this with any kind of predictability. Um, you know, when we see the presence of a ghost, uh, do we have these sorts of things at, at hand? Like, you know, the electromagnetic stuff or the EVP or, or what have you. I mean, they kind of provide something, but it's not like huge, like uh, not like, um, you know, in conventional science where we can uh, measure, you know, weight or like photosynthetic capacity or something like that. And I'm probably getting, you know, showing my bio stuff, but, <laughs> you know, apples to oranges. Um, but obviously, yeah, like you, you do have to provide some kind of evidence to me. Um, in terms of uh, some of these other more woo-woo kind of things. And uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of that term, woo-woo, but I've heard of it quite a, quite a bit. It's weird. I don't know. But uh, sometimes I feel like I'm a lady without a country, kind of like uh, Patton Oswald when he was talking about, you know, hate the war, hate, you know, this. And it's like, I also hate hippies. I'm a man without a country. Uh, so... Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I feel like, you know, I don't have a specific group of people that I can really relate to at certain points. Um, and, you know, it's like, you know, I hang out with atheists, you know, be it on YouTube or somewhere else. And then they start talking about, you know, how religion is a crock and then I start feeling uncomfortable. Or I hang out with pagans and they talk about... Uh, you know, uh, Reiki or something like that. Um, and then I start feeling uncomfortable again. Uh, so, you know, if you have any similar experiences with these sorts of subjects, um, I'd love to hear from it. Um, or from you and about your, your uh, experiences. Um, if you have any sorts of different experiences with that sort of thing, if you're a believer or you're a skeptic, I'd love to hear from you too. Um, it's all great for me because I love, you know, just hearing other people's opinions about it. So without further ado, it's getting late. So I will wish you sub and farewell. Bye.